what program are you running? It's time to reevaluate, rewire, and rewrite your script. You have the ability to empower yourself growing forward. What will you choose for you? Set now. I'm on Debbie here offering a general reading collective message as always explore what resonates. Satnam means the truth within and I believe that you know what's best for you and may these words, these messages confirm, validate, and support you on your path in some way. I've got a ton coming in this morning and I hope it all comes through because Sometimes it feels like it comes in in different threads and it all, I guess it almost feels tangential in its manner of expression and like a puzzle piece in the way that it comes in and really take what resonates and disregard the rest. Words like operating system, hard drive, and sentient being are coming to mind. And I don't know like the computer world is not like, I don't know that language. So if that makes sense to you, I feel like that relates to this conversation. I also feel like the previous um, reading also um, might make sense to you if it, if it calls to you the last ring I uploaded. Um, may want to take a look at that. So are you on? Most of you who are listening to this have pro are probably empaths, starseed, light worker. It depends on how you want to categorize yourself. Um, and you don't need to. You don't need to identify. Um, but um, I feel like it's about breaking a mold of people pleasing. And are you in that operating mode of giving to others? And it might be something else, but consider the way in which you're operating and interacting and where does that stem from? You do have the oppor opportunity to rewire the code and rewrite the script. So the light codes that have come in, the awareness that is brought through to you, those aha moments are an opportunity for you to see anew, to see yourself and begin to structure your way of being in a way that serves you best and serves the greatest good. What past life patterns or current life, t life experiences evoke your empathy? So you may be operating on a way that you can feel others' emotions. You can feel um, their pain. You can understand, like you understand the emotional undercurrent. You might even pick up on what's happening in the past lives, even though the good word paradigm is coming up, even though you're functioning on one level, you can see the undercurrent of why they are behaving that way. Right? So that's what I mean by like, what's evoking empathy. Are you giving someone's behavior a pass? because you're able to articulate and understand why they behave that way, right? Just because you can understand why they operate or what their past life um, patterns bring to the table or what their traumas and what their current circumstance or their family history, their marriage or whatever behavior patterns are kicking up, even though you might be able to understand why they behave that way, doesn't mean they receive a pass. So just check in with your empathy meter and are you giving someone a pass that they don't deserve and it's time for them to be carded. Um, so, and then sometimes those people that are you're working with, connecting with, they know that you have a strong empathy meter and they might pull at your heartstrings. And some of these pulls might be like subconscious because think of a child, like naturally, like a toddler will play games for their own power. And like, if I drop my food while I'm sitting here at the high chair, instead of eating it, I create a reaction. It's like learning your power, right? But someone sometimes learns their power 
and operates in a way like in a very I guess toddler childlike manner just to feel powerful and use your empathy and your heartstrings and your desire to people please to their advantage not to create an outcome for the greatest good but just to simply feel like they've got power and strength wow look what i can get this person to do and they might not be consciously aware and sometimes they are because sometimes people will pull at your boundaries pull at the things that you stand to or like if you I want to say like the core, the essence, the core of you, like try to pull you down from who you, st how you stand or who you are. Right. And some of that is their own insecurities. Like they don't know what to do with your energy. They don't know what to do with your strength other than tear it down. What insecurities require you to stand in your strength? So if you've got things in your past life, and usually this is where the two of you connect, I used to um, not think of the universe testing us. And I have to come back to that. And I have to say that maybe sometimes the divine does test you, it brings you together. How are you going to rewrite this scenario for the greatest good? Are you going to continue the same cycle? Even though it played out in a past life, similarly, the energy still lingers, but it plays out in a different way now. So how can you rewrite the script to then heal the patterns of the past? And sometimes, depending on who you are, and most likely you're the empath, starseed, lightworker, um, you're required to stand your ground. And that hurts because when you stand your ground, when you cut that cord, when you say no, it's just like a parent saying no, punishing your kids. Sometimes it hurts because you're like, oh man, it like, or I used to not like punishing my daughter because it was like, oh, if I give this punishment, it means we can't go do X, Y, and Z because I like, like, like to go and play. Like we'd always go to parks and museums and do things. Like if I set this punishment that we have to stay home all day, I'm punished too. <laughs> or if you set a new standard um, and require someone else to elevate and they don't step up to the plate, that means you might feel like you're at a loss for losing them. They're at a loss for losing you, honey. But it really is like you standing your ground requires someone else to level up and if you cut that cord you and that connection and you stay strong in your stance you're going to feel not only your pain of losing that connection eventually you're going to go past that but you're going to keep feeling them tugging at you like that mer mercury at retrograde energy and just because you feel their pull their energetic pull you feel that pain it means that you've got to clear that, but it's more of, it doesn't mean you have to go back to that connection. It's them now processing it. They're processing it, processing it on a different timeline than you. Like um, it's happening later than when you've received the, the guidance and information to make that cut. And they have <laughs> some time to catch up <clears throat> with where you've elevated to and not most likely they can't come up to the, your level, but they'll then take time to process it so it's like there's a delayed response in your action than them understanding it and then receiving it does that make sense so like just because you feel that pain of someone doesn't mean you open the door it just means they're starting to process what you've already processed continue to stand your ground so some of the pain you feel about a connection about someone is not your own it's them months ago i i got the word black hole and i was like I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. And it feels like that comes to play today. If you're in operating in people pleasing mode and someone else is in power mode, it's like this, like this empty bucket that can't get filled. Although there is more information on black holes than I'm aware of <clears throat> that might say that we're going somewhere else. Like it, it doesn't just go nowhere. Does that make sense? Um, but it feels like this empty bucket, this emptiness, like, um, you know, overeaters, <laughs> like you could go to the buffet table 10 times and you're still not going to be satiated. It's not going to be enough because there's something more that needs to be connected in the system for you to operate in a new way. Um, and when it comes to like being sucked in, sucked in, 
Like if you're in that narcissist empath, empath paradigm and you're like, here I go again, or how could I be that stupid? I've had that conversation recently with someone they're like, how could I be that stupid? And I'm like, no, yeah, you're not stupid because they're playing on your heartstrings, right? They're playing on your empathy meters. They know, they know your weaknesses and they capitalize on them. They capitalize on your weaknesses, your ability to feel empathy. They capitalize on that. How fucked up is that? But they get you with that intensity, right? Because you feel that. You're both like charged up as you connect because you know there's a reason for this. There's a soul contract here, right? How will you write that contract? Will it continue to operate in the same mode or will you close out that cycle? When you initially come together, they're able to put on that mask, but that mask will only last so long, but it lasts as long as you keep your blinders up, your blinders up. And I used to say like, you, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, so the, the divine will reveal to us as we are ready to step up. But it's also like you being willing to see. And sometimes it's, it's really hard to see where we're at. And two examples of my own like came to mind with that. You know, I was telling someone about something in my childhood. <laughs> my mom used to go out and kill a squirrel for me to eat for lunch. <laughs> And then my friend was kind of like asking questions about like the lifestyle that my parents are living. Like we, we were in, um, this building <laughs> with a dirt floor, no, no running water, no electricity. And I always thought it just was ha hazard. And one day I found out they like intentionally built that. And I was like, what the fuck? But, um, she was kind of prying into the lifestyle of being like, well, is it just a way of life? And she's like, she kind of concluded with like, um, that was neglect. And I was like, I never saw it that way because that's just where it came from. Example. Another example was like, I remember working with, um, and I don't like sharing this stuff, but it, it's coming up. These these are coming up as examples. And I share just so you, you don't feel like you're alone. And like, I'm still growing and learning too. I'm learning every day. Uh, to rewrite my script. So just because I'm here writing my mouth doesn't mean I'm better than you. It means I'm growing through it too. And as I learn, I choose to share. Um, because I pray, you know, I've been through some things, I've prayed, and then I get this guidance to speak to you. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> here we go. And um, I remember working with a group of women who had were in a shelter and, you know, victims of domestic violence. And when I start a yoga class, I usually check in how the how are their bodies? Like, is there anything they want to work on? Anything hurting? And they, you know, people disclose what, what's going on. And this particular group disclosed um, instances of domestic abuse, violence, pain, um, physical harm. And I remember that at the end of the day, just like standing in my apartment. And I was living in an apartment by myself. I was not partnered living independently, choosing not to date, choosing not to be in a relationship, consciously to heal. Um, and I remember standing there brushing my teeth that day after that class being like, I only have a chipped tooth. And like, as soon as like, <laughs> I like heard that thought, I was like, damn, like, let's put this in perspective. <laughs> like, that's not <laughs> just because someone else's experience might have been worse or whatever. It's just like how we need to put up blinders to cope with our experiences, to then let our guard down, to like feel it, to release and transmute it. So it takes some time. Um, and I guess this is where it comes in of like, uh, law of attraction. Like, I don't feel like we call it in per se, like you deserve to be abused or you deserve to be neglected or, whether it's emotional abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, you know, it goes on, you know, people have ways of manipulating and operating, but it's really of how long you're going to allow someone to run that game on you. And then it's until you see yourself anew and be, be willing to pick up the pieces and stand your ground that the game changes and life changes. And it's a process to elevate your standards and then learn how to operate at that new level. It is a choice. But it isn't until you see a new that you're able to create a new stage for yourself to operate on. Um, I think I already talked about that. Um, it, 
the people they know how to play the game and the game always changes oh my gosh I think this is more where the black hole comes in it's like it's never enough when you're dealing with a narcissist they always change the game always change the game like you can't win you you can't win and I would recommend looking at the labyrinth and like the last scene um, is interesting to listen to if you're dealing if you're an empath dealing with a narcissist um, or have dealt with that to just listen to that with that scene with that new lens um, and they might pull at the core of you they might pull, pull at the core of you to break you down in ways that you you didn't anticipate because you want to give you want to love and you might keep giving it's now time to just stand your ground um i think i already spoke to this Reco recovery requires running a new program so you have to operate under a new system it takes time to bring that in and kind of bring your whole system up to play and those around you like your whole world will change and you operate on a new program uh, the song No Scrubs was coming in this morning on TLC. Um, Black Hole, um, I believe there are, uh, there's a bit about Black Holes that I read um, when I initially came through. For, I think it's in the book Parallel Worlds, but it was definitely the author. I'm just not sure if Parallel Worlds is the, the book. He's got a series of books that, um, you know, I don't know if it's scientific that honors the spiritual or it's so scientific that like the spiritual is obvious i don't know what it is but it has both lenses in it um, um but several books i believe they're from 2006. when it comes to like recovery and seeing a new um i gave two examples about myself but the glass castle uh the memoir it's been years since i've read that but that also comes to mind because it was like wanting to see her dad in the light that he, the picture that he painted for himself but he couldn't quite get it together but again it's been years since I've read the memoir so forgive me if the way I'm seeing it now is not um congruent with what I'm speaking to like it's not right <laughs> but I, I would recommend that as far as like recovery and the lens of our experience and then how that plays out in our behaviors moving forward in adulthood um I, I feel like that's a good good book and then you know if you want to get into the scientific spiritual world and go down a, a, a delightful rabbit hole if your mind can absorb it i would recommend his work all right let's see what the cards had to say again rewriting so i brought out the i think this is a chinese writing stone You know when it when it comes to seeing a new it's like the shadow and the light come together it's we can't avoid one without the other i have a friend they always be like how are you doing crystal oh you wouldn't say you always call me crystal I'm like i'm fantastic i wish i put the f on for that you'd be like you're not fucking fantastic <laughs> like that's what i need to see right now that's what i need to see to keep going but it isn't until you honor both sides or honor all things you know but you do what you got to do you you operate on the program you need to to function to stay afoot two of cups connecting who's at your table who deserves to be at your table and what are you serving yourself what are they serving you is it a bunch of games is it a solid meal is it a bunch of bullshit is it a bunch of drama and what are you accustomed to seven of cups what you're accustomed to can confuse you and then the game someone plays can confuse you about what's coming to the table. Um, a lot of times through cuts is about third party, um, you know, other commitments other than you. Are you accepting breadcrumbs? Because that's all you know. So the third party might be like, you're just like that person is emotionally unavailable, right? They could have other commitments like work. They could have other commitments. Um, Six of Cups, past life. Six of Cups came up in the the last reading uh, that I did that was very strong. Past life energy has been very strong in the last few number of readings, discussions I've had. Knight of Swords, um, that was reverse. That speaks to you. Um, 
And a lot of times I, I think of, you know, setting boundaries with this card. So in reverse, that makes sense. It's time to set a boundary. And this comes back to simulation. Like we're all running a fucking simulation. This is a game. This is just part of like something bigger. Like we're kind of fooling ourselves to think that we're anything, but we're nothing. Um, you know, parallel universes, it kind of comes back to that. This is a simulation. This is a test. What happens when you two t come together? Are you going to step up? Are you going to play games? Are you going to set your boundaries? Are you going to go through this? How will you grow through this? Will the cycle continue? Will you choose to call back your power? And in the labyrinth, you know, the, the line that she couldn't remember was, you have no power over me. And ultimately, the the person that's running all these games on you, they know that. Otherwise, they wouldn't play all those games. They wouldn't have that mask. Who will you allow to sit at your table? And what meal will you order up? Look at the labyrinth, like, like go on YouTube <laughs> and find that last scene. I'll try to put down the description as well as the name of these books. Call back your power. You might want to do like, um, I've word social media wanted to come out mine. So maybe a social media cleanse. It's okay to unfollow people for a bit, right? If their, their, their feed is triggering, but, um, Calling about your power, maybe I'm not a doctor, consult your physician, uh, do what's best for your body, but perhaps, you know, you calling back your power also requires some embodied healing. So clearing your system, I often talk about clearing and strengthening your org field, but you might want to do some work with the solar plexus, whether that is calling in some light codes um, or doing some Pilates, some core work and really integrating like the pelvic floor and the core awareness and the the whole spinal column, like foot up through the crown of your head, aware of the bones in your body and really integrating your physical system into this current reality and work in the awareness to the core strength. Hope that much makes sense. Uh, change, <laughs> change, look at the games. Like you are that, you are that queen. You are the one that turns heads. You are the one that can make moves. You are the one that can nurture, right? Remind yourself of that. It's a privilege to sit at the table with you. Medicine? Oh, you're receiving medicine or poison <laughs> under the current circumstances, right? Is the connection serving your greatest good? And what is necessary? What element would serve the greatest good? The kidney is standing out there, past filtering water emotions, the so second chakra, the, the filtration system, wine. Uh, polyphenoids, also some perhaps, uh, well poison like in the games that they're feeding you that you can't see the strength of who you are, creating the confusion, um, required quite a love, um, you know it could be not that there isn't love there but the sense of undeserving on both parties that kick up these games. And underneath, like, what is your commitment? What is your commitment? Underneath, there really is love. There is a strong attachment. The Six of Cups tells us that. And while one party might feel that they're undeserving of love, that's where these games come into play. So what scenario is being created 
based on this paradigm of not deserving. Either way, what you're accepting or what they're dishing out. It could be one-sided in that you're over giving and someone is withholding by choice. And by playing your empathy strings, they, like you can look at all their childhood trauma, you can see all these undercurrents, it's, see why they might be doing that. Not being willing to see that they are choosing to withhold love, they're choosing to play games, they are choosing to be hurtful and neglectful. That's a harsh reality. Well, I do hope this served well. Uh, continue on in your journey. Keep growing and taking care of you. Lots of light and love.